Hello, valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. A special shout out to my super thanks contributor at Francisco4596. I really appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. And along with it, just a quick reminder, if you want to contribute to the channel's efforts, the super thanks button is next to the like button on the taskbar. And with that, this is the story of the Baldwin Locomotive Works 60,000 locomotive ever built, the locomotive that went nowhere. Enjoy. The railways are today in an urgent need of locomotives that will produce an increased ton mileage per hour. This requirement involves not only high tractive force, but also speed capacity for sustained periods. We offer locomotives of this design in full confidence that they will meet the most exacting demands of heavy traffic. Locomotive number 60,000 is especially fitted for freight service, but the same principles of construction can be used in motor power for passenger service. There are many locomotives in use today that could properly be replaced with strictly modern power. We are ready at all times to cooperate with any railway de desires of raising the standard of its motor power equipment. The Baldwin Locomotive Works, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, January 1st, 1927. Now since I started my channel, I noticed how we as people tend to gravitate toward the oddballs, the square peg, and the brilliant farrier stories. And I put the Baldwin 4102 number 60,000 in that same category. And this was Baldwin's only experimental locomotive that didn't involve another railroad or they had any buyer in mind. The 60,000 was just something that they developed in hopes that someone would be interested in manufacturing and mass producing it. And well, it didn't exactly turn out very well for them. So in 1926, the Baldwin Locomotive Works was the America's most dominant steam locomotive manufacturer. And when the 60,000 was in development and production and rolled out at Baldwin's Eddystone plant in 1926, it was ready to shake up the motor power establishment. But as a piece of technology, it was just way too much of an outlier and eventually went nowhere. Well, not quite nowhere. In 1933, it wound up at the Franklin Institute. So when Baldwin started shopping this 60,000, wow isn't exactly the reaction Baldwin got. And as a company, Baldwin was already feeling the heat from the Lima Locomotive Works, whose new superpower technology was beginning to turn the industry on its ear, especially after following the impressive debut of the 284 Berkshire. In the intensely competitive world of steam, Baldwin needed a credible response. For all of the major locomotive builders of that era, including Elko, the challenge was to provide what the Class 1 railroads were asking for, more speed and more horsepower. The drag freight era was over. For Lima, the solution was a relatively conventional boiler match with a much larger firebox supported by the then revolutionary four-wheel trailing truck, all of it driving the standard two-cylinder engine. And these, of course, were all the characteristics of the Berkshire-type locomotive. And once again, this wasn't something that one of the railroads was asking Baldwin to develop. This is a, a venture that Baldwin did on her own. And so what Baldwin unveiled in March of 1926 went in an entirely different direction. The already obsolete 410 2 wheel arrangement might have been surprising enough, but what really set the 60,000 apart was this water tube firebox. Its extremely high boiler pressure of 350 PSI and its use of a two-stage three-cylinder compound engine with a middle cylinder powering the second set of drivers and providing low steam pressure to the two outside cylinders. Baldwin sent the 60,000 to the Pennsylvania Railroad's Altoona test plant, where the 60,000 racked up 4,500 cylinder horsepower, which at that time was the highest yet recorded. Baldwin then sent the locomotive out on a barnstorming tour that included the Pennsylvania Railroad, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the Erie Railroad, the CB&Q, the Great Northern, the Santa Fe, and the Southern Pacific. But the engine failed to impress anybody, and in February of 19. 1928 is slunk back to the Eddystone, unable to garner, garner any orders. So what happened here? Why weren't any of the railroads willing to kick the tires, so to speak, on this new design? And the answer to that is the 60,000 had notable weaknesses. Railroads found the middle cylinder inaccessible and difficult to maintain, and they were very, very leery of what they concluded would be an overly maintenance-intensive boiler. 
And needless to say, the 60,000's rejection put a damper on the heart and soul of many of the Baldwin Locomotive Works' engineering department. Damaged egos, wounded pride or not, Baldwin regained its momentum and had two more decades being the leader of locomotive design and production. To give you an all an idea of the nuts and bolts of this locomotive, the 60,000 was designed to be the best locomotive that Baldwin had ever made. The design boasted three cylinders, it weighed 350 short tons, including the tender, and could pull up to 7,000 short tons of freight. Its top speed is about 70 miles an hour. 60,000 was very innovative. It carried unusual technology which included a water tube firebox. This was intended to improve efficiency, but the tubes were prone to burst inside the firebox. It is also a compound. That is, expanded the steam once in the inside cylinder and then again in the two outside cylinders. Although compounding increases, increases efficiency, it was an extra complication that the U.S. railroads had mostly rejected by the middle of the 1920s. The weight and length of the engine were too much for all but the heaviest and straightest of tracks. And that, of course, on many railroads, that's another thing against the 60,000. Other innovations the 60,000 had was a corkscrew that carried coal into the fire, a sawdust spreader for traction, a signaling device, and pneumatic braking. But unfortunately, as I alluded to earlier, the railroads just weren't interested in buying it because it was just too long, it was too complicated, and it was too heavy. And also to, to go along with that, most of the railroads were already highly interested and invested in the 484 uh, wheel arrangement which was quickly becoming the ideal high speed heavy freight and passenger locomotive. And so the 60,000 went back to Philadelphia in 1928 and that's where it was stored until 1932 and it was donated to the Franklin Institute Science Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania and it was sold to them for exactly $1. So with that, the following specifications apply to the Baldwin Locomotive Works, locomotive number 60,000. The wheel arrangement was a 410-2. The cylinders were high pressure, one at 27 inches by 32 inches, and low pressure, they had two at 27 by 32 inches. The boiler diameter was 84 inches. Steam pressure was 350 PSI. The main driver diameter was 63 and a half inches. The weight on the drivers was 338,400 pounds. The total engine weight was 457,500 pounds. The combined weight along with the tender was 700,900 pounds. The tractive force was 82,500 pounds. The grade area in the firebox was 82 and a half square feet. The maximum speed was 70 miles an hour. The maximum measured power output was 4,515 horsepower. And as mentioned, the locomotive was retired and stored in 1928 and then sold for that $1 in 1933 to the Franklin Institute of Science Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And that'll wrap up this video, and I shall end it by saying thank you for watching this video. If you love today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, as both features help the channel grow immensely. And turn on all of your notifications if you want to see everything that I upload, which is now one or two videos a day. And if you don't wish to use the super thanks to help support the channel, you can visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.